Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we have 7.33. They're promising, Valve is promising some crazy stuff here. And to prove that, let's read the first line of the new Frontiers update. That is what they're calling 7.33. They're giving it a full name. That's a big deal. Sometimes Dota gameplay patches are small. Sometimes they can get pretty big. It's fair. This one is huge. That's quite the promise. It's got all the things you were probably expecting. Balance changes, new items, hero reworks, improvements, but we included a few changes you probably weren't expecting, like a new hero attribute type. And brace yourself, the map is now 40% bigger. That is massive. Like, straight up, that is massive. And you could see, if we kind of look at this outline here, and I'm gonna pull up the map later on into this video, but if we look at the outline here, there seems to be like the, the towers tend to be the outside of the map, but it seems like like south and north of the rivers, there's actually more areas to farm, to do stuff, whatever it is. And so that's pretty crazy. I mean, that's gonna completely change Dota, right? The angles of attack change, where the resources are, where you can gank from, where you can smoke to, etc., etc. It's huge. But all these new gameplay features won't matter if the match you get into isn't a good one. So we're also shipping some much needed matchmaking improvements. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what they mean by that, but all right. Head on over to the New Frontiers update page for all the details, but don't head over just yet. Read this first sentence. The Berlin Major is on April 26th, and the Fantasy Player cards are now available. Okay, here's the link again. <laughs> all right, and before we get into all these crazy changes in 7.33, I just wanna let you guys know that there's so much in this patch, literally so much in this patch, that I'm gonna be making, I mean, I wanna cover everything here on YouTube. I wanna make a video for every single new item, hero, blah, 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 but there's just too much. I can't post all of that on YouTube and the videos on YouTube need to be a bit higher quality and longer. Over on the website, I'm gonna cover every little niche thing over the next few weeks, probably month with how big this patch is. So if you're interested in getting ahead on the meta, winning more ranked games because you have better information than your peers, then you should sub to the website. It's 50% off right now using code DOTA733. Yeah, I feel like I'm some like TV proc there. You know what I mean? So that's the promo code. Go check it out, guys. Go sub to the website. It's literally so cheap, way less than a Netflix subscription. And I'm gonna be posting high quality content, getting you ahead on the patch. So I'll see you there. Alrighty, so now we're gonna start with the new map. They said it's 40% bigger, but okay. The core objective of the game remains the same. Your lanes aren't further away from each other and everything you need to win is still in the center of the map. But with 40% more terrain, there's plenty of room to reap new resources and discover new strategies. Both main jungles have also been fully reconfigured, shaking up vision placement, juke routes, farming, and more. So starting off, we have Roshan's new homes. So I expected, well, they say Roshan's, meaning there's, no, 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 okay, it's Roshan's. There's not multiple Roshan's, it's Roshan's new homes. Roshan sold his old river pit and is taking advantage of this new real estate. He's got two fantastic new pits located in the northwest and southeast corners of the map. It's a pit lover's paradise, boasting peekaboo views of the fountains and just minutes away from the secret shops. These pits must also be close to a gym because Roshan's even tankier now. Roshan also no longer drops Akinim shards and now drops cheese on his second death instead of third. So okay, it seems to be harder to kill Roche, but you get cheese on the second life, which is, I would argue, better than uh, Aghanim Shard. Cheese, pretty early into the game, 20 minutes into the early game, is pretty overpowered, so yeah, it can be very strong. His third death drops a Refresher Shard or a Scepter, depending on whether he's in North Pit or South Pit, so it's predictable now. Interesting. Then we have the Twin Gates, which kind of give me, they give me Outpost vibes. Two gates now connect the corners of the map near the Safe Lane Towers. Okay, so yeah, like that. Allowing players to teleport instantly from one edge of the map to the other. This is a gameplay change, but it has obvious lore implications. <laughs> lore implications, okay. You guessed it, Dota 2 now unofficially exists in the PMEU Pac-Man Expanded Universe. I have no idea what that means. I'm not familiar with the Pac-Man Expanded Universe. Maybe some of you guys are, I have no idea. But what's crazy about this Twin Gates that's like potentially, really potentially game breaking is that it says you can instantly teleport from one edge of the map to the other. I would imagine there's like major cooldowns to this because that's really broken. That's gonna make lane swapping and ganking crazy, right? Like imagining your position four can just teleport to the safe lane instantly? I mean, for instance, a hero like Tusk, 
If he can just teleport from the off lane to the safe lane, he's going to basically be guaranteed to kill every time, as far as I'm concerned. And so if this is what it sounds like, it better cost gold. You know what I mean? You better have to really spend a lot to do this because that sounds pretty damn broken to me. Like, the potential of this is wild for certain roaming heroes. Okay, there's also Lotus Pools, which kind of reminds me of the old shrine. Players can now find lotus pools on the left and right sides of the map. Okay, so like the, the side shops near where the creep waves first meet. Okay, or there. <laughs> they periodically spawn fruit when Eden grants mana and HP. So it is similar to the old shrines. Players can stockpile this fruit and then combine it into even larger, higher value fruit in the late game. Okay, this larger fruit can even be combined into incredibly large fruit. All right, what happens if you combine the incredibly large fruit? Probably nothing. Definitely something. Okay, so you can get really big fruit. Guess we'll have to see. There's Tormentors. Wow, what is all this stuff? Oh my gosh. These two powerful neutral creeps spawn near each base after 20 minutes and both have a belly full of Aghanim shards. But there's a catch. And the catch is, there's two catches. Wow, they're really like messing around with this patch. They, they were in a goofy mood while making this. Tormentors are equipped with mega shields, which reflect most of the damage you throw at them. They grow stronger every time you kill them. So it will probably require your entire team to take one down. That's quite the commitment. For Aghanim Shard, it says it has a belly of Aghanim Shards though. And what this could imply to me, my first thought, is maybe if it's not that hard to kill these things, it sounds pretty hard if it needs your whole team, but if it's not that hard to kill these things, or if there's certain heroes that are particularly good at killing them, maybe heroes that have built-in healing mechanics, because if it's reflecting damage, you're gonna need lifesteal or, or healing to kill it, that's what it sounds like at least, like someone like, um, you know, someone like an Io or a Witch Doctor, you know what I mean, could really help you out. But if it drops a lot of Aghanim Shards, you can design team comps to abuse this early on into the game. You know what I mean? A hero, I'll go back to Witch Doctor, really strong shard. Maybe something like a Slark, a Ricky. You can get very early shards potentially, and that could be pretty impressive. Then we have Watchers. Watchers are like Terminators, but for watching. That would kind of make sense. They are relentless. They don't know pain. They don't know fear. They are lazy though. They won't start watching until you click on them. Watchers begin the game inactive and neutral, but once activated, grant vision over the watchers area for seven minutes or until your enemies sabotage it to temporarily disable it. When a team kills Roshan, all watchers will turn to their side. Wow. That means killing Roshan is like insanely huge. I mean, it was already a big deal. Now, you get complete map vision control if you kill Roche? You have to contest Roche now. If you guys aren't already contesting Roche in your pubs or forcing your team to take it, I mean, uh, come on, complete. I mean, if these things give a lot of vision, which I would imagine they do, and you take all of them from Roche? Whew, okay. So pretty cool vision game. You got to fight over it. It's like a stronger outpost almost because outposts don't give that much vision, but these things probably give a lot of vision. Defender's Gates combine the sparkly high fantasy of Dota with the practicality of doors on your house that you can lock when you go to the grocery store to destroy its ancient. The hell? <laughs> it's a back door to your base with a handy force field that lets your team through and keeps the enemy team out. While the enemy is assaulting the front, you can sneak in and out through the back. Oh, okay. So I would imagine this is on like the outside of the map, uh, the 40% area that they added, it's probably near the sides of your base. That's what it looks like. So you can kind of do smoke angst through the side, a lot of angles. I mean, this is gonna make it, I would imagine very hard to siege Hygron if you can come from now the right side as well, because let's say you're sieging the south side of the map, you would only be able to get attacked from the north and through the, through the lane. Now there's one more angle. I mean, as a support player, you would position on that on that south side, you would avoid the north and the lane. You would, if you're a pugna or something like that, you would sit on that south. You can't do that anymore. At least you have to be afraid of a defender's gate. So this is a big deal. Wisdom runes. Oh, explore the edges of the map to unearth wisdom runes, which grant XP boost to any heroes wise enough to steal one. So it's like a tome of knowledge. Wisdom runes spawn near your base offering an easy to defend way to keep a losing game from spinning out of control. Okay, so basically if you're losing the game, you're gonna be closer to these things. I would imagine the enemy team can contest them though, and I'm curious how much XP they give because XP is a big deal, especially early on into the game, hitting an early level five, level six. This doesn't specify when you can take them or how you take them. So we'll kind of have to learn more over time about that because this is certainly something that could really impact the game. Like Toma Knowledge, there's a reason why there's only one Toma Knowledge. It's a very broken item. Shield runes. Okay, this is a new river power rune. Also get an addition with the, oh, okay. So yeah, it's just a new power rune. Get an addition with the new beefy shield rune, which gives 50% of your max HP as a barrier. Wow, that's a lot. 
Dive a tower for a kill in the early game or walk up a blind hill to surprise both yourself and the enemy. <laughs> cool, I, this is actually a very cool rune. It doesn't seem too, too broken, particularly good on certain heroes with high HP. Uh, for instance, a Dragonite, a Tiny, particularly abuse this, but definitely strong on any hero, even something like a Puck, Ember, Storm. Why not? You know what I mean? It's just another solid rune. 12 new creep camps. Does that mean they reposition the camps or they're actually 12 new camps? Because that is a lot of camps. Some of the creeps got tired of getting butchered all the time in the jungle and have established 12 new camps scattered throughout the expanded map. So you can butcher them there too. <laughs> That's kind of messed up. But if there are 12 new camps on the map, including the old ones, the meta will be farming. You will have to, with supports, be able to farm. I'm pretty sure the game will become completely farm orientated. Like literally you will need four heroes at farm. It'll be like one protect four. <laughs> Because if, if there's that many creep camps, if there's six extra per side, you will need to be able to wipe through camps to get through all of them. So heroes like Luna, for instance, will be very much needed if there are truly this many camps on the map. That's going to be crazy. New outposts. The expanded map features two new outposts. The original outposts have been moved to new locations, which raises the obvious question of whether they're truly the original outposts. Nice try, Socrates. They are. Wow, they, they really with the jokes here, Valve. Valve's going crazy with the jokes. <laughs> I like it though, it's, it's pretty fun. I, I like what they're going with. It's a very personal patch. It feels like they put a ton of effort in, you know, even just like with the little blogs here they got going with the changes. But okay, this is so many changes. I'm, I'm just gonna say it now, I'm very impressed. Like even if this was the entire patch, which it's not, but even if this was the entire patch, it would be a major, major patch. It would be a game changing, game breaking patch and that's awesome to see because frankly it's been a long time since we've had one of these so yeah this is pretty incredible i'm very excited to give it a go now let's talk about the major gameplay changes uh, i'm probably going to go into matchmaking user interface and balance changes in another video but let's do the major gameplay changes here in this video together all right so starting we have the new attribute type they kind of mentioned this that there's some hero that's going to have no int or something like that in the in the teaser maybe this has to do something with it as the fourth spirit brother we'd released, Void Spirit shouldn't have been a strength, agility, or intelligence hero. To stand apart, he really should have been a new kind of hero, a fourth kind of hero. Introducing Universal Heroes, a new mean stat group composed of existing heroes that now gain 0.6 damage from each stat of any attribute. That means they get a lot of value out of iron branches and like crowns. That could be pretty overpowered in the early game in some regard. Our engineers assure us this number is perfectly balanced. Unless it isn't, it might not be. But the good news is we're all going to find out together in the grand adventure that is the new Frontiers update. And I respect that. If it's a little bit broken, they can tune it down a week from now, two weeks from now. I like them putting out something that maybe is a little bit too strong, considering from an Iron Branch, you would get 1.8 damage, which is certainly way too much. It sounds like way too much. All right, Black King Bar reworked. Well, might not seem like a big deal. It's like, why would they put an, an entire page for one item but it's Black King Bar. This is the staple item of Dota. I wouldn't say there's a more influential item on Dota than like Black King Bar. You could compare it with like Observer Ward, Smoke at a Seat, Magic Wand, and then it's like Black King Bar, you know what I mean? Maybe Boots. But Black King Bar reworked. Activating Black King Bar now applies a basic dispel and grants 50% magic resistance and debuff immunity. While it's active, negative effects from debuffs don't affect you. Plus you'll have immunity from pure and reflected damage. Wow. But be careful, if Black King Bar expires before the duration of any of the debuffs, the debuffs will be applied for whatever duration is left. Effects that pierce magic immunity now also pierce debuff immunity. So this is a big buff to certain abilities as well that uh, pierce debuff immunity. This is game changing guys. I'm not even, this is going to change Dota a lot. Because the reason why it's going to change Dota a lot is this is a massive buff to a certain type of hero. It's a massive buff to heroes that aren't affected by magic immunity. For instance, something like Clockwork Cogs, it's not affected by magic immunity. If he puts you in Cogs and you have status resist or debuff immunity, I get, oh, it's not status resist, it's debuff immunity. You basically get an active glimmer key, right? You get a basic dispel, then you get 50% magic resistance and debuff immunity. So then if, so let's say someone gales you, you get 50% debuff immunity, or no, altogether you get debuff immunity. 
So for the duration of the BKB, which it doesn't show here, maybe it's the same as before, for let's say nine seconds, you can't get debuffed, which is significant, but that's no magic immunity. While it's active, negative effects from debuffs don't affect you, but they will stay on you. So you only get the basic dispel wands. That's something to keep in mind, but that's something you get from items like Yules and, and Manta style. So it's not like that exclusive to Black King Bar, right? But you also get immunity from pure and reflected damage. So I guess it's a nerf to Blade Mail, kind of, and Arcanist Armor, and a lot of pure damage heroes. So it's a hard nerf to pure damage, for sure. All right, and I'm quickly bringing us into a demo mode because this is gonna be one of the major changes of the patch. So you'll see here, if I click Black King Bar and I get stunned by the Venge, it actually doesn't stun me. However, it will still do damage, which kind of means you have to be careful. It's a big deal, like, if you're playing Vengeful Spirit, you don't want to, like, stun a BKB target, because frankly, it does nothing. You're just wasting your stun. I mean, I guess you can do some magic damage, and that's what's significant. You can technically kill people that are BKB'd with spells, but, I mean, you're only doing half damage, right? And if they have magic resist, it's way less than half damage, which they will. Heroes have built-in magic resist. So, yeah, there's that. On top of that, let's say you get Gale, the Gale will stay on you. Right? And then when the BKB ends, you'll get affected by the entirety of the spell. You can see on max movement speed, when my BKB ends, I'm then Gale. So it's it's a big change in that regard. You can still cast spells, you can still slow the person eventually, like after the BKB ends. But it's weird, it's weird, it seems cool because you can still nuke the person. I thought it meant that you can't stun them, but seemingly you can stun them. For, like, straight up. Odd change, I don't exactly know how this is going to impact the game for now, I'm not going to theory craft on it too much, but let's move on. Neutral item drops reworked. Murdering forest creatures used to mean getting cool new neutral items. That usually went to the carry, who usually wasn't you. Now killing a neutral creep randomly drops a token, which lets you choose from five available neutral items. Whoa. Each token offers a full array of five options, so even the last player to redeem their token has a real choice. Is that even true? Don't they just get the last one anyway? <laughs> Not they don't really have a choice, right? Like, aren't they still getting... Or can you have five of the same neutral items? I don't really know. Maybe you can get five of the same ones. Teams can give tokens to anyone to use, but once you select an item, it can't be shared. Wait, so if you're griefing, I can just use three of the tokens all for, all for myself? And then not give it to my teammate? I don't know if that's a good idea. I guess you could do that with the old items, to be fair. But now you have to be very aware of using these tokens. And I can't imagine you can have five of the same neutral items. So still, if you're position five, you're gonna get cucked and have to get the last item, I think. Neutral creep scaling. Neutral creeps and their abilities now scale over time. Huh, yes, camps will get harder to wipe out as the game goes on, but heroes with the ability to control creeps are going to have some serious backup. So basically they're saying, okay, heroes like Ench and Chen, maybe they're gonna be too damn good. Which honestly, I can kind of see that. If these things scale with time, then you can just send them down side lanes and they're giga strong. That's gonna be pretty crazy. Kill form, and it's gonna be hard to kill these camps, which is gonna incentivize a lot of fighting, I would imagine. However, there's a lot of camps on the map, so maybe you'll have to try to farm them anyway because there's just a billion gold on the map, I think. We've reworked the kill formula to make early game kills more impactful and motivate players to gank other lanes. Oh, so, okay. This is actually something uh, that was uh, mentioned to me by one of my friends. I wonder if this is his impact on Dota, but okay, we'll see. Uh, but basically what he was mentioning to me, I'm not gonna say too much. What was mentioned to me is that uh, basically kills didn't seem to matter a lot. Like it was way more important just to get last hits. And I've been saying this in my videos for like years now. Kills are overrated. I've been saying this, you guys know this. If you're a fan of my channel, I say kills are overrated, they are. If you didn't get a lot of last hits, you would never be as good as the top players. Even if you went 6-0, if you had low last hits, it just, I mean, yes, 6-0 is insane, right? Like, that's the exception, but you get what I'm saying. It just wasn't worth moving around the map. You have to focus on last hits. If the kill formula is reworked, and you, let's say you get first blood levels of gold for every early game kill, I mean, kills are going to matter a lot. The game will revolve around playing kill lanes rather than lanes that can just sustain and, and CS to an extent. We've also reduced gold scaling for lane creeps, making creeps farming less prop- Oh, so, okay, they even nerfed lane creeps over time. So farming lane creeps is less profitable as the game goes on, encouraging players to beat the gold out of each other instead, which already is what people did in pubs. So I'll be honest, this is a nerf to, I would say, better players. I'll be blunt. 
because better players understood the importance of splitting up, up the map and accruing gold through lane creeps and jungle creeps, where the average pub player is just like, I'm gonna go kill people because I have no attention span and don't understand how Dota works. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but okay, this is a cool change. This is pretty, uh, that's, I mean, this is massive. Like, a huge change to how Dota's gonna play out. An unstunning new feature. Interesting. Playing your hero is always more fun than sitting around not playing your hero. Well, fans of playing things and critics of not playing things, your dreams have come true. Get ready to play your hero more than ever. How easy. We reduced the duration of almost every disable in the game. This is League of Legends. Why are we playing League of Legends? How did we come up with this insane plan? Even easier. We took a Beastmaster Roar to the face and suddenly had a lot of time to think. Very funny, Val. <laughs> very funny. Very funny. I don't know. I wonder by what percentage. I, I would imagine it's probably about 20%, but that's crazy. So BKB changed. Still, it makes you immune, but um, stuns heavy nerfed, I, I think. Let's actually quickly check. For instance, uh, What's a hero? I know the duration of the stun. I know uh, Lesh stun is two seconds flat. Now it's 1.7, which is about what? A 15% decrease? It's not 20%. Yeah, it's like about a 15, 18% decrease. Pretty significant. You can even see it specifies stun duration decreased from two to 1.7. So, all right, this is gonna impact Dota a lot. It's gonna mean you have to be very clean with your chain stuns. Very, very clean with your chain stuns. Otherwise, you're not, you're not, you're just not going to pick up kills. And um, heroes that can build up a lot of HP and auras simply are going to be near impossible to chain stun. So Dota might become a real game of, of stacking auras and like as it already was. I mean, if you nerf stun duration, it's going to be very hard to prevent heroes from getting off their mech, their wand, their pipe, etc, etc. Right. So uh, making it harder to burst heroes has a very profound impact on the game. All right. Now I'm going to end the video here. I'm going to be posting another video after this one with every single hero change. I kind of just looked through it and I thought to myself, there's no possible way. I need a quick break, guys. So I'm going to get some water. I'll see you in the next video. I'm so excited for this patch. I mean, this is incredible. I just want to say all of these gameplay changes, reworks, balances, they look incredible. It's going to be very fun to explore the game of Dota, which is all why we love playing Dota, getting to explore such a diverse and deep game. And these changes truly seem complex, hard to understand. And that's the fun part, right? That's the fun part, getting to just mess around, try shit out. You know what I mean, so I'm really excited. If you guys are excited as I am, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to keep you guys up to date on every single broken build. You guys know, if, if you don't know, here on this channel, I'm going to post always the day after the patch, broken builds to try, so I'll be getting to that. But the, the video that's going to come after this one is talking about every single hero change and the implication those changes have on the game of Dota. There's just so many of them that I got to break this up into two videos. Otherwise, this video would literally be three, four hours long, and I'm not purge gamers. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.